Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody, see that? The big red, big red letters is Alex, and the white letters say the Ramble. That must be the Ramble with Alex Bennett. That's me. That's who I am, and we're here uh, for another week of absolute frustration and trying to figure out why the hell we're doing this in the first place, Okay. Um, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. Five nights, four nights a week. I'm beginning to wonder if you know. Uh, I think it was Albert who said to me the other day that he said, you know, maybe you should just go to one day a week. You know, then everybody will appreciate it more. And you know, he's probably right, but I don't know. Then what do I do the rest of that time? I just had a sip of my really nice coffee with my uh, ginger and uh, what else I have in here? Eggnog. Yeah. It, yeah, it's a no carbohydrate uh, deal that I'm drinking here. So, anyway, let me see here. I got to clear out some of the people that are calling in right now because they will, you'll see them show up at the top of the screen here, and then I got to get rid of them. Uh, but uh, I do have one guy who I'm going to bring on right now, and of course, he's somebody who we bring on. Uh, every single uh, week at this time, uh, and that is, of course, our old friend. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Phil Meyer. Hello, Phil. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, well, I got a COVID test today. Did you really? Yeah. What for? Is, uh, well, I had an employee that said last week he didn't feel good, mm-hmm. and I said, well, don't come in. Mm-hmm. All right. Days later, last Thursday, or uh, he he comes in and he says, "Well, I don't feel good." And I said, "Then go home." So he was there fifteen minutes. <laughs> Meanwhile, it was enough to give everybody the crud, and so I told everybody at the office, "I said, you know, we all got to get tested." Uh, one guy got tested yesterday, and he yeah. says, "I'm not coming back until I get the results." Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I don't blame him. You know, I, I'm I'm out there infecting the uh, the uh, public. Uh, you know, until I get my results. Well, you, know, you I, don't know if you're infecting anybody because uh, chances are, even if you um, even if you were exposed to it, you don't have it because you've had the you know you've had the vaccine. Yeah, but can I carry it? Can I get it? And I just I, don't this get is, the. This is a big question. You know, I mean, let's be honest about all of this. Uh, people don't know, (laughs) you know, I mean, for all they (laughs) act like they know what's happening. I've had a cough in the last day. Um, get a COVID test. No, I don't need a COVID test. (laughs) Uh, I haven't been out. I can't catch anything. What do you mean? Hey, you know, I was being so careful. I was wearing a mask and, you know, uh, and uh, you know, just one guy, 15 minutes, look, and he, look, all he did was come to the door of my it, office it, and said, I don't feel good, it, and I said, go home. It doesn't mean that he ha- doesn't have it, okay? But it does mean that you probably can't get it. Yeah. All right? that's, so, that's, that's you know, your awesome. other guys might show up testing positive, but you maybe won't at all. I, you know? I have two, uh, one other uh, employee that had both vaccines mm-hmm. uh, and in the store, mm-hmm. and then I have um, two that weren't old enough to, to get the right, vaccines. Right. And, uh, you know, so they, they've both gone and tested. I've tested. Uh, the other guy who had two vaccines tested the week before because he went somewhere uh, that he had to have shown a, uh, he went on a couple days to mm-hmm. Oregon yeah. and, uh, photographing stuff. And yeah. he had to have uh, a, a COVID test before going. Mm-hmm. And uh, he came out okay. Yeah. 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 Well, was, you know, we, we, were, uh, we live in this time of horrible fear, you know, and uh, what are you going to do? You know, you got to you're doing the right thing by asking your people to be uh, tested. You probably didn't need to be tested, but, you know, to show camaraderie. That's what you do. 
You know? It's easy. Uh, you know, they, they don't stick the thing up as far as they used to. Uh, now, uh, they ha- this time they had, a, had me do it myself, uh, only one inch up the nose. And I said, are you sure? I said, this nose, you know, could probably take two inches. Uh, mine so, could take about a, about a mile. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I, uh, I did it at uh, 4.30. It's 7.30 here. So uh, it was only a few hours ago. How fast uh, are they going to get it back to you? Uh, well, uh, for the operation that I had last week, it took two days. Uh, so I had a COVID test last week. Oh, and I've okay. got a COVID test this if week. If you had one last week and it came out negative, right? right. You're, you're probably okay. You well, know what I'm hit probably- me the other day? What hit me the other day, I was watching uh, the news and the sports comes on, which I hardly ever read yeah. or watch, rather. And uh, they're saying... Oh, and that the NCAA, you know, for the final five or whatever's coming up, I don't know what they call that thing. Is that basketball or baseball? Basketball, basketball. They said two of the, five of the referees tested positive. And I thought for a second, I went, you know, we all really welcome the days back where when a sports figure tested positive, it was for drugs. <laughs> That's true. You know, I mean, steroids or something. It's all know. it's all changed. You know, it's amazing. Just amazing. Well, you know, uh, talking about the vaccine, uh, AstraZeneca, I guess, uh, got pulled off the EU market. AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they got pulled off the EU market uh, because of uh, some. There issues. were among all the millions of Astra, Astra, AstraZeneca shots that were given out, forty of them came up with blood clots, which is less than the public usually gets without a, a drug. So they don't know whether it's the drug or the people that got the, you know. Did you hear uh, that Australia gave uh, a ton of uh, AstraZeneca vaccines to Papua New Guinea? It seems that the uh, people in Papua New Guinea Mm -hmm. are uh, test 50 percent of those tested are uh, positive for COVID. Really? Yeah. So uh, now there's only nine million people in uh, in Papua New Guinea. Excuse me. I have to see something a second. Sure. Oh, there it is. Okay. I wanted to make sure I had my soda with me. I reached over here and I couldn't find it, but here I go. Oh, soda, not Soto. Okay. Soda. Uh, Soda. Uh, Well, anyway, uh, so uh, the people in uh, Australia Mm -hmm. gave a whole bunch of doses to the Papua New Guinea. I thought these things, maybe they got a discount from Europe on those uh, vaccines. Um, Yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, you know, I... uh, I just am, am glad that uh, uh, I'm through and I had the shots and probably I'm going to be okay. All right. Yeah. You know. Uh, so. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, uh, what was the other thing? I oh. knock on wood when I say that because you never know. Uh, they gave me this, uh, you know, what to do uh, after you've had a COVID test. Yeah. And if you uh, comes back, does it say there, if it comes back positive, bend over and kiss your ass goodbye? Well, yeah, they told yeah. me to tuck my head between my legs and get under the desk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's good for atomic fallout as well. Yeah, you, it's just we're so living in this time of fear. You know, it's just amazing to me. Well, you know, uh, Longfellow says if you do what it is that you fear, the fear will go away. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, I, how do you do that with uh, with a thing like COVID? But um, let's see. Oh, you know what's happening because of COVID? Is people are grinding their teeth. Did you hear about this? I grind my teeth anyway. Well, what's what's happening is dentists are saying that eight times more people are cracking their teeth because they're stressed, and uh, and they're grinding and they're grinding their teeth. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I started doing that about I don't know eight nine months ago. And uh, I, I got a, uh, a bite guard. And, uh, did you go to and your dentist was, and get that? Yeah, yeah, they and take I, an impression. Yeah, yeah, and how much did that cost you? $800. Yeah, yeah, it's 800 fucking bucks. I'm not getting one. Well, okay. I cracked one of my, or the root in one of my teeth. And it, it, was, a, it was a tooth that I actually 
uh, had a root canal in many years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he said, well, you know, we can pull that tooth and and put in a uh, what is it that you have? The well, the implant implant. Yeah. So I'm saying to myself, I'm not you know crazy about doing that. What's an implant? Five grand. Uh, I'm actually, uh, I was getting it for about three grand. Okay, three. Grand. I, but I got it at at, uh, at Implants or Us. Yeah, well, and, I, uh, got, uh, I got I got I got mine at Costco. Yeah, <laughs> 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 give you two. <laughs> They're taped together. Yeah, yeah. But uh, and anyway, you know, I I didn't realize that that was caused from stress because I'd never grind had ground my teeth before. Well, I grind my teeth a bit, but I don't grind them. You see, it, uh, it, what they worried about is not that you grind them when you're awake, that you grind them while you're asleep. That's right. Uh, and Marjorie has a bite plate, which I got to tell you, there's nothing sexier. When it's time oh. to say goodnight and I go in for that goodnight kiss to get nothing but rubber. You yeah, know? yeah. Here's mine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really sexy. It's really yeah, sexy. I heard that on the news today. And, I, you know, I said that, you know, that's that's kind of interesting. Yeah, but 800 bucks for a, for a goddamn piece. Show them the piece of plastic again. Sure. Yeah, and, and it's it's starting look, to turn yellow. At, I'm gonna have to buy another one. Look at that! Look at that! Folks. It was clear, huh? It was clear. I I clean it every day. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, I don't know Eight, what this yellow stuff. Eight hundred bucks for that piece of garbage? Just plastic. Well, they take an impression, and you know, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Hey, uh, let's see what else was going on. Um, the uh, New York Times. Mm -hmm. That's a newspaper. Uh, yeah, it's, I our, just think, it's, our, it's our hometown newspaper here. Yeah, and the and the Washington Post, which is down the street. Yeah, uh, I guess they reported on uh, Quo, not Cuomo, but on Trump uh, and his phone call with uh, uh, a Georgia uh, was a Georgia, uh, not DA. That, that, was that the call he made where he threatened the uh, the head of the election board or something? I told like him that. to find eleven thousand yeah, votes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, it turns out it wasn't true. What do you mean? That's we heard it. Uh, no, uh, they as far what happened was the New York Times apologized. Did you see so what did they apologize for, though? Because the uh, phone because call. They, no, but they, the phone call actually existed. We heard the phone call. There was a phone call, but the words that they said that he said weren't. It may have been their way of reporting it in the paper may have been wrong, but we've also heard that tape on television in which he's telling the guy, find me 11 or 18,000 or how many votes he wanted to find. You know, I think they took it out of context. They but anyway, didn't there's, there's of, a, they didn't take it out of context. They, well, I've, uh, I've heard the whole tape. It's like, uh, no, well, he well, said those look, things. Look around for that article. Well, maybe it might be, maybe it, he I, didn't say it the way in which... They reported. They reported it. it, and that's what they're apologizing for. You right, know, that's their correct. interpretation of it, or something. Yeah. But you know, the tape is out there for everybody to hear, including you, and it's 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 rather telling. You know. Yeah. Well, there was two phone calls. You know. There were two. Yeah, it's the first phone call that they jumped on. Was the other one him trying to like sell them insurance or something? Uh, <laughs> no, but the other one was was probably uh, uh, shouldn't have been. Some of the words that he used shouldn't have been used. But the first phone call was totally innocent, and they took it out of context and it created a big, uh, a big, a big deal. Well, with let's it. see what happens. There's going to be a big, uh, maybe a case charged, charging him with a case down there. So. Yeah. Well, uh, that could be why they're coming up with all of this stuff. Well, that's but, why uh, somebody may have said whatever. But uh, the fact is that the Georgia uh, people down there, the attorney general, is looking into charging him with a crime, actually. Wow. Uh, well, you know, uh, talking about hey, listen, uh, listen he's, he's no longer president. You can give up on him. You're what you're. You have that ability. He's the leader of seventy five million people. No, he isn't the leader of shit. Okay, he's my he, leader. He, he, he can barely. He can barely uh, have the wait staff deal with him at Mar a Lago. Okay, yeah. he doesn't I, have the, any authority left, even over Republicans. What is that? That's a magnifying glass. I wanted to see what it did to the camera, <laughs> but I thought it would do it made something. the camera look bigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. Was interesting. Hey, yeah. Governor Newsom, Governor Newsom, another governor in the news. Uh, the recall—they got enough signatures. Did they really? 
Yeah. So he said that anybody that would be against him is a racist. That was uh, today. That was his quote. Newsom, uh, uh, to begin with, I don't believe in recalls, as you know. I, yeah. You know, I just think that, you know, it, it amounts to nothing but buyer's remorse. And the fact is that somebody should be allowed to be governor for the time that he's elected to be governor unless he does something just so outrageously uh, um, terrible that you, you impeach him. Okay. Even Ray Davis didn't do anything so bad. He no. just bought he bought right. electricity at the wrong time. So that ability to to do a recall, you know, how many how many people had to sign signatures to get a recall? They used two million signatures because I think they needed a million and a half, so they got two million. Yeah. But uh, how many people live in California? Uh, forty, uh, or forty five. But that, yeah, you know, yeah. So uh, I mean, it doesn't take a lot of people right. to do a recall. And uh, I don't know. I just I find it uh, upsetting. I, I, I think that they should have at least uh, half of the voting population. So if uh, out of the 45 million, let's say 15 million can vote, mm -hmm. then you should have seven and a half million to to do a recall. Yeah, well, I just uh, I just find recalls wrong. You know, uh, you uh, could always find two million people. Uh, in a state of and 45 look at, million look at, to look sign what anything. happened with the Gray Davis thing. I mean, then you had yet, uh, then anybody can run for governor. Well, and then Gary the person, Coleman then was the, robbed. Yeah, the people, the person who gets the most votes right. wins. It isn't like a majority, like over 50%, it's whoever gets the most votes wins. You, so you know, that's, that's the, how Arnold Schwarzenegger won because everybody knew who the hell he was. Uh, Gary Coleman. Mm -hmm. Also ran against Arnold Schwarzenegger for that position. He came up he short. Robbed. He came up short. He came up short. That's yeah. right. Hey, you know, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, they found, it's been 60 years since they found anything with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Fantastic mm -hmm. discovery. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, what they found was written in Greek and they translated it. And uh, you know what it said? Um, do you want a Savlaki? I don't know. What did it say? There's a joke here, I know. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. I'm surprised you haven't men mentioned what's going on at the border. Well, give it time. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I pick a few. Uh, so <laughs> you know, they're, show they're showing the, the wall, and there's like 60 feet of wall, and then it's all open. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, they're coming right through the opening. Yeah, well, no, there's a town in Texas that's got a bar. And the bar is, uh, the, there's an opening right in front of where they are. And they've got tables and chairs and <laughs> bathrooms. And, and people are just going there and they're sleeping. And they're, I'm, uh, I'm that desert boy. Am I thirsty? Yeah. 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 So, you know, I, I wonder if they have to uh, limit the number of migrants that are coming in uh, to conform with COVID rules. Well, I mean, they've, it, it's a it's a real problem. But I think what happened was, is that everybody saw that uh, Trump was no longer president. So the the coast is clear. And all of a sudden the surge happened. You know, you it, the surge, what, the surge would have happened uh, at any point that that we changed leadership. OK, yeah. so I don't think it's the fault of, of, of Biden or whatever, but I think he's trying to handle it in what he considers a humane manner. And I think we're, the way we solve that problem of, of all of that, and it, I think it's a it's an important thing that we do, is that we try and, and kill some of the reasons why they're coming here. You know, like get these it's other economic. countries, these other countries to respond to their poverty. And also in our case, you know, they come here because there's work here, okay? And the reason there's work here is because people pick them up at, like, uh, uh, on a street Seven, corner 11, in San 11. Rafael and then take them home and have them mow their lawns. Yeah. There should be fines for that. You know, we, sh yeah, we should do... They're, 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 uh, going, they're scoffing on the system. They're going around the system. Yeah. They're not paying workers' comp. They're not paying uh, uh, social correct. security. That's correct. But also... I mean, what it's doing is it's encouraging them to come here because there is work to be found, uh, albeit illegal work, but there is work to be found, and nobody ever gets charged with that. 
and they really should. You know, I mean, and not just a tap on the wrist. If you make a couple hundred bucks, people will keep hiring him. If you make a couple of thousand bucks, maybe they'll start thinking twice about it. You, you know? remember several years ago, uh, I don't remember which uh, uh, which president was uh, or senator or something like that was appointing uh, people or they were getting appointed to positions mm -hmm. by uh, during in the presidencies, different presidencies. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were all getting defeated because they had illegal nannies and they and they were uh, they were employing them mm -hmm. uh, illegally. Mm -hmm. And uh, so some of them paid the taxes, but uh, they ultimately had to recuse themselves from the uh, being yeah. considered for the position. Yeah. Um, but uh, so what do you think? What do you, how do, uh, do you have any opinion on what's happening with Cuomo here in this great state of New York? Well, uh, I heard that the Harlem Globetrotters came out and said that he accosted them. Mm. Uh, you know, and, well, uh, uh, he blew me. Yeah, he yeah, blew yeah. me. Uh, and I and I still I feel felt very uncomfortable. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's when uh, is this crap gonna stop? Well, it, it's know? it's continuing. It's called wokeness, and what's happening is uh, well, I hate the term woke because the yeah. word is awake. Okay, it's okay. not woke. Well, I'm just giving you the term they use. I know, but you know, I mean, I'm, I'm so tired of it. Oh, it's woke this and woke that. And I'm going, oh, what do you want? You really want to use the kids' jargon? You want to show you're really hip by using woke? Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm but, also tired. I'm also tired of canceled culture. Yeah. You know, well, uh, yeah. There are, they are doing that. But uh, with this, with this awoke or woke, uh, what's happening is, is people sit around mm -hmm. and they look for things to be outraged about. Yeah. Uh, you know, I heard the other day somebody was upset over uh, th their state being uh, maligned. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so the next day, I guess they listened to the show. Uh, the guy's uh, state was maligned. He comes back and says, well, I'm upset about this, that's and this. Instead of, you know, letting it roll off your back and, you know, realizing that, you know. It's... Find something better to do with your time. You know, like yeah. work on ending poverty. You know, do something helpful, not just going, oh, you know, uh, I'm like, oh, uh, the government. Out well, here's what gets me. OK, that slimy scumbag Schumer yeah. and that slimy, slimy cunt. I'll call her that Gillibrand yeah. and the double cunt Ocasio-Cortez. But Hill, Gillibrand is practiced at getting people to resign. Well, wait Look a minute. What, Hold it, on. Yeah, it, I know. But, you know, come on. You, it, what, what, what is going through their mind? Haven't they ever heard of due process that all these people who have accused him, okay, and the main reason they're asking for his resignation is not because of uh, the nursing scandal. They're, it's because of the, 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 you know, the Me Too stuff, okay? Right. Haven't they ever heard, and, oh, excuse me, I got to get that arrow out of there. Haven't they ever heard of uh, uh, due process, and that people, when they make statements, should swear under oath that they're true. Well, and without swearing under oath, it's just simply an allegation. Uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, they, they're saying that uh, Cuomo is expendable. They needed him to be uh, a tough guy against Trump. And to stand up to Trump and to call him names and do whatever mm -hmm. he did. Now that Trump is gone, they've got nobody to beat up on. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, they they don't need Cuomo. He's he's expendable to the Democrats. Yeah. So they're they're throwing him under the bus because you know he is kind of arrogant and he is a oh, look 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 rough. look he is known as being a bully. He's known as being an asshole. He's known for a lot of things, but, you know, being an asshole and being a bully doesn't mean that you get thrown out of office. And no, the, all these allegations policy. from these women, which keep piling up, are just simply allegations. They are allegations without vetting. You, you know, nobody has taken an oath uh, and said, I swear to tell the truth, right? I think they will. They will, uh, they will have to eventually, but they don't have to now. And when it comes time for them to testify, if they know they're lying, they won't testify. 
Okay. Yeah, even even Nadler uh, is coming out against Cuomo. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, but they're coming out against Cuomo, and there has been no evidence presented. There have been no oaths taken. There hasn't even been a lie detector, which you can't always so depend where, on. Where were you on the... Uh, 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 who's the guy that uh, uh, went for the Supreme Court justice uh, uh, with the... Um, the one who was accused of uh, raping Blasey Ford. Oh well, th- th- to begin with, um, uh, he was up for Avenor. He, Avenor. he was up for a very important job with the government, the Supreme Court. Secondly, she was under oath. Secondly, he was under oath. I mean, mm-hmm. all every, all the dies were out of T's across dies were forget it. Anyway, yeah. the eyes were dotted, uh, and uh, in that case, um, you know, it was just. Uh, uh, I I felt that he they they should bring in anything that would question his morality and his ability to do his job. Okay, but people didn't want due process for him. They wanted his head. There wasn't due process available there because he wasn't being charged with any crime. Uh, and in this case, if they're if they're going to impeach, um, I'm sorry, but you know, they can impeach uh, Cuomo. There's no. This again. Impeach, that's no, what they, I don't think that's they what can they're impeach. doing. That's what they're doing. That's what oh, they're oh, asking impeach. for. They can't um, recall. They, they can't, can't recall. They can't but recall. They can't okay. Yeah. But yeah. they can impeach and then they can throw them out of office. You know, if the vote, vote comes. It's the same kind of impeachment we have, you know, federally. But well, all I'm it, saying, all I'm saying is, is that I, I'm very disappointed that Schumer doesn't believe in our Constitution and in due process. And then neither does uh Kirsten Gillibrand, but we knew that after Al Franken, and, and I expect better out of Ocasio Cortez. Okay, because I always felt that whatever you think of her, she seems like she believes in the democratic process. But apparently, they're all get, ganging up on him because they see it as being politically uh, expedient. Expedient, and quite frankly, I don't think they're playing it right because, quite frankly, here in New York, they've taken polls and. Even the Democrats, everybody wants him to stay in office. So yeah. I think they're barking up the wrong tree. I've got a feeling a, a majority of Californians want Newsom to stay. Uh, this is going to be an interesting uh, couple well, of months. You know, uh, Newsom, you know, it, Newsom has screwed up a great deal. Uh, and uh, I don't oh, feel in, in quite the same. Look, let me just say this. We'll go an extra five minutes over in our our panel Thanks. can wait okay um i just believe that uh yes these women should be heard they should be heard as testimony swearing on a bible or whatever and saying that you are attesting that what you're saying is the truth not just allegations all right and that, and that's you know and that beyond that we have to just say, hey, we have to give him the benefit of the doubt, too, that they are lying. Yeah. Yes, women should be heard, but they shouldn't necessarily be, what's the word I'm looking for? Believed. Believed <laughs> out of hand Yeah. that anything they say is the truth, because then every guy in this world has got a target on his back. And in yeah. the case of this governor, you've got a governor who, who's a, you know, he's a, he's a single guy. You know, he's always, he's always, well, see, when I was a single guy, I was always on the make. I didn't want to make somebody feel uncomfortable or anything like that. And I wouldn't push it if I felt that it wouldn't be reciprocated. But nevertheless, he's a single guy and he's going to come on to women. And part of, you know, the come on may be something as simple as doing some simple chit chat to feel her out to see if she's interested. But that can get you nailed these days. Sure. Especially if it's an employee. Or during a... Uh, well, some of these uh, women weren't even employees. Some of them were. One of them was an iPhone repair person. No, I'm kidding. But you know, <laughs> they, it seems like all these guys use the excuse, can you come up and fix my iPhone? Yeah? Yeah. I, I thought you, they wanted to see my lithographs. Yeah, they want to see your lithographs. <laughs> hey, listen, we've run over here. I, yeah. But I like talking to you. you know. Thanks. You're, Same. you're a piece of shit, but I like you. you know? Hey. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'll see you next week, unless you your COVID test comes up bad, and you know. Oh, if it does, it won't spread over the well, internet. Well, you know, you've had the shots, and nobody who's ever gotten the shots has gotten a serious case. 
yeah. of COVID. Well, I, I, I'm not thinking about myself. I just don't want to spread yeah, it. Right. And, to, and to also, uh, well, they, they, they say now that they think these shots also make you uh, unspreadable. Okay. But who knows? Butter? You're like butter. I was going to say that. I, that was my next joke, but you beat me to it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no, ladies and gentlemen, the wonderfulness that is Phil Meyer. Thanks, Phil. Take care. Have bye, a good show. Bye-bye, Phil. See you later. Okay, there he goes. All right. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I've got to do a little, few little things here to fix things up so that uh, I, and when I'm through here, I don't have Phil Meyer's name up on the screen anymore. And we should probably go to our citizen panel immediately because they've all been waiting with bated breath. Uh, and uh, here they here they go come. And uh, let me just... Uh, Bring them all on here. Let's oh, see yeah. here. Who have we got? We've got, uh, well, we've got Kilroy. Oh, there. They, it's uh, Trucker Steve. Let's see a little more of your head. Uh, yeah. There we go. Okay. Oh, and here, here's the family. Brian Neary's there. Uh, oh, what is she doing? What is I she doing? Adrian. <laughs> Adrian, Adrian, say hi to everybody. Adrian is such Adrian. a Adrian is such a ham, but then she pretends like she's really shy. Yeah. Oh, say hi. Say hi. Hey, Adrian. Oh, you know we love you, Adrian. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, she's so huge. Say hi. 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 Just say hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. Ooh, uh, 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 uh. Say goodbye. Look at silly face. Look at. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew that would get her. Okay. On that note, good night. <laughs> yeah. Good night. Nice to see the uh, the old lady. I don't know if you would call her the old lady. She's a pretty young lady. Oh, oh, yes, see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's only like a year younger. Yeah. Now, now you can't get her out of there, right? Oh, so I said twenty. Hey. Huh? What'd you say? She said. Uh, she said, "I'm very handsome." Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, oh boy, I'm jealous. You got a great looking wife and great looking <clears throat> kid. I mean, what else can you want? I say you're the boy cheap. They say you're the boy cheap? Oh, okay. Is the boy, how old your boy now? 15. He just turned oh. 15. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's a, a bad that, age. Just turned 13. That's a terrible age. Nah. Yeah, I'm Hello. Now. Hello, Robert. Good to have you back again. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, when does the rebuttal for Phil's version of the news begin? Uh, any, yeah. <laughs> any time. Yeah. But first, I just let me say hello to Charlie and let me say hello to Jeff. And, of course, Trucker Steve is here as well. Hello there, buddy. So what do you want to rebut? Well, it never ceases to amaze me that Phil, the news that Phil hears regards two Democratic governors. It doesn't cover, let's make a list here, it doesn't cover Ron Johnson saying that he wasn't afraid of the people on January 6th, but he was afraid of the BLM people. It doesn't cover Tucker Carlson screaming that Biden is telling him who he can spend 4th of July with and thereby trampling on his rights. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How did Tucker Carlson come Tucker? to that conclusion? How did, Tucker Carlson. how did Tucker Carlson come to that assumption? Well, he, he is blasting that Biden is trampling on his rights by telling him that he has to get together with certain people on the 4th of July. You, you, I didn't say it, so I'm not going to defend it. Well, Phil also didn't mention that 25 states are actively trying to pass voter suppression laws. Mm -hmm. And by the way, before he defends himself and says, well, that's to keep down fraudulent voters, what exactly does shortening the hours on election day do to cut down on fraudulent voters? Somebody's well, got to explain that to me. This whole thing with the, uh, with the uh, voter <laughs> suppression laws they're trying to pass is, is just amazing. <laughs> I mean, they admit that if they don't in, make these laws happen, uh, which is purely suppressive, then the Democrats, uh, Republicans will never win again. Well, maybe, said the, as much. maybe the Republicans won't ever yeah. win again because they don't have the majority in this country. They've said as much. You know? 
And yeah. what do you want? You want you want to t- upset that balance, and they've got a majority. You know, we've got a majority, they've got a minority, and they figure, why don't they balance it out more by coming up with good ideas that some Democrats will vote for? Oh, excuse me. I also, also, I also, in to version, yeah, also in Phil's version of the news, he mm-hmm. didn't hear and talk about Representative, I believe her last name is Sanchez, a Republican, mm-hmm. who, while voting against the COVID relief bill, mm-hmm touted the fact in her home district that it was a bipartisan relief bill. You know, they, I love it. Well, you there were there were some Republicans who went up. back to their local constituency and kind of acted like they voted for it. Oh, sure. They didn't. Yeah, the guy in Mississippi, too. Yeah. Wow. That's... And by the way, mm-hmm. up on my screen here ahead of me is, is MSNBC, and breaking news is that U.S. Intel has announced that Russia tried to influence the 2020 election. Mm. Well, that's been around for the last day or so, that story. Um, and, yeah, they made a very big attempt. Apparently, they didn't do a good enough job of it. And apparently, we were there to kind of stonewall that from happening. Uh, but, uh, no, they, they were out to get Trump reelected. You know. But we're focused on Gavin Newsom going to a restaurant. We're focused on Cuomo and whether or not he should resign. And boy, have we deflected from the fact that Republicans don't say a peep about what took place at the Capitol building on January 6th. Well, you know what's interesting to me? Okay, first of all, let's go back to the Cuomo thing. The Democrats are very fond of eating their own, aren't they? I mean, you know, the Republicans won't eat their own. Uh, but the Democrats certainly do. I mean, I think it's a little early for these people to say to Cuomo, you've got to resign. There's no, there's no testimony. There's no sworn testimony from any of these women to put that thing in, the, in a context that makes it, very, makes it very serious. They're simply allegations. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, you mentioned Ron Johnson. You know, Ron Johnson, right after the, the attack in, on January the 6th, came out and made a statement that he thought those were Antifa, Antifa demonstrators yeah. faking like they were oh, supporters. Yes. So if yes. he really believed that, he should have been afraid on January 6th, too. Didn't he get the, so me- now- didn't he get the memo that there is no Antifa? That no. basically Antifa is is, is such no, a. No, but what I'm saying is he's contradicted himself. Oh, so yeah. Okay. His latest he said he quote wasn't is. On January 6th. Hmm? His latest quote to a radio show is, um, "I wasn't afraid of the people at the Capitol because they were people who loved America. <laughs> I was far more afraid of the people who demonstrated for Black Lives Matter. Let's see." What's the difference between these people the and difference? those people? <laughs> I can come up with one difference. Well, one difference is nobody in the anywhere in the Black Lives Matter demonstrations wore a set of horns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I just you know um, I think well you know to a white to a white racist I suppose a Black Lives Matter demonstration is threatening, probably. Very. You know I I I I understand yeah. his uh, his fear because somebody should get him. <laughs> you know, I mean it, it's it's terrible and it's terrible what's happening in Charlie's state. I mean, God damn it! I mean, are people running around without masks now, Charlie? Uh, yeah, unless you go in a store or a restaurant. There's like, spring break, too, right now, and they're showing people, all the kids on the beaches and everything. Sure. They, they don't think yeah, they're going to no get mask. it. So. Yep. You know, if they get it, they're not going to get it badly, probably. There's a, that, that, <clears throat> that is a known fact. But, God damn it, you know, it's, it's just amazing to me uh, what's you know what's been going on in that state with and and a couple of other states with you know we're going to just whatever progress we've made goodbye you know yes jeff i heard today that they're trying to come up with a government 
approach mm -hmm. for all states, mm -hmm. the U.S. approach, that everybody would have to wear a mask at working at their office. Hmm. Not bad. It's yeah. not a bad what? idea. We have to. We have to now. Well, we have. We've had to for a while, unless you're in an office or you're in a conference room by yourself. But really, yeah, yeah. But you know, eighty percent of our people are in clean rooms, so they're wearing masks anyway. And then when they That's come right. out, they're just wearing it too. But yeah, but we've we've had that going on for a while. What's happening to Marjorie is at her office. She's only going. She's going in two days a week now. Uh, because she likes, oddly enough, she likes being in the office because she just, all the stuff is there, you know, mm -hmm. all the files are there. She can go to them and whatever. But uh, she so she wants to go two days a week. But the guy who runs the office, or at least is her boss ostensibly, she's in mm -hmm. the front. She's not a receptionist, really, because they don't have enough traffic coming in and out to have a receptionist, okay? so But she's in the front. So in case somebody does come in or somebody comes with packages, you know, she because she's the office manager, she can handle that. Well, this guy who runs her office doesn't want her to be at the front anymore. Wants her to have her own office in the back where she can be separated from everybody else. You know. Um, and uh, that's, that's how they're trying to figure out how to handle the situation. You know. But it's... Who knows? But I just, what's happening in Texas is just insane. And now I see these pictures of spring break. I mean, we, sh we shouldn't allow spring break this year. Just keep teaching them. We say you'll get out early or something like that, you know? Because we're so close to that finish line. And, the, and, and the, no, here, here's the thing I wanted to bring up to Phil, and I forgot completely because my mind, you know, it's an old man. I don't remember things anymore, and I should jot them down. But I don't jot them down. All right. Let Robert. Let Robert answer in Phil's. And yeah, Phil, we should have Phil a debate. Say, you oh. ask Phil. Oh, and Robert should have a debate. Answer. Okay. Okay. So you're Phil. So <laughs> I just read, or, or saw on TV, that 45 percent of Republicans say they don't want to get the COVID shot. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. They By the way, lie. no matter a, a, any amount of voter suppression they want to set up, it's not going to be better than all their people dying, you know, but uh, yeah. then they'll never win again. But, uh, Phil, what do you think of that? Uh, duh. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I only <laughs> Wait listen a minute. To Phil, they, be fair me. to him. Phil doesn't go, duh. I, I, I only listen to what Fox tells me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, Phil would Good make check. a joke. 40, 40, 45% of Republicans say they are not going to yeah. take the shot. Are, are they well, out of their are they out of their minds? But their leader, their leader was behind the scenes and grabbed one of the first ones off the shelf. Oh, yeah. oh he was saying oh, yeah. stab me now. And yes. and also his whole his whole crew at the White House were all lining yeah, all up to them. get the shots. But here's the thing, <laughs> people are saying what Trump should do is come out and say, "Hey, I got the shot, you should get the shot." You know, that he'd be that. saving a lot of lives by doing it. You think he's going to do that? Nope. nope. But he could have, and he could have used the whole, let's get the economy back. This is our, you know, this is the light at the end of the tunnel. He could have jump started everything. Yeah. Go out and get the shot because I invented it. Oh, yeah. The Trump yeah. shot. Yeah, That's the Trump right. Shot. The Trump yeah. vaccine. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I just, I'm amazed at the, uh, I'm amazed at what, uh, what goes on these days. So, uh, uh, Robert, do you have another question for our group here? Sure. You, you know, there's another way to do this. It's up to you. We could do a whole bunch and just have a raise of hands real quick. And then if there's, if you have a tremendous story, you could stop the proceedings. How about that? Yeah, that that's good. But let, let's let right. do this because uh, nobody's here that uh, seems to mind a little, All right. little simplicity. Have you, ever punched, have you ever punched someone? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Boy, you are just a ragamuffin. When you, were when you I a, was a kid. Were, were you a kid at the yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, when I was a kid. I, I, hold on, hold kid. on, wait, hold on. Oh, Jeff, it's for you. It's your parole officer. <laughs> no, not again. <laughs> Don't tell him where I live. Okay, okay, I won't. But you punched somebody, <laughs> Jeff? You? Well, yeah, we were kids. We punched sure. everybody. Well, you punched everybody. I never punched anybody in school. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, think, 
I and think I, I had a bully once that was after me, if I remember correctly, uh, when I was in grade, when I was in just really early grade school, like first, second grade. Mm. And my father was a very nonviolent guy, said, what you should do the next time he bullies you is just hit him. Yeah. And yeah. I think maybe I hit him. And I, he never Good bullied me again. Good for right. you. But, you know, uh, I think the, my father you, told me the same story. Yeah. I got into a fight with my best friend, Steve Gruber. For some reason, I just went nuts and crazy. And I started, we, I started literally getting into a physical fight with him. I don't know why. I was just, I was, it was a time in my life where I was just on edge. Everything was wrong, you know. <laughs> and I guess I just took it out on him. We got into an argument. I, one thing led to another, and I started slugging. That, but that was the only time I remember ever. Oh, one other time I got into a fight. Almost. Not quite. Just about. Um, there was this comedian, this comedy writer, wor worked for the National Lampoon. And I saw him in a bar, and he said something nasty to me, because I didn't like this guy anyway. And we had had some words in the past. And he, and he was in this bar, and he said something to really get get me up in a storm, and I started getting into a fight with him. You know who that guy was? You ever hear of Tony Hendra? Uh, he's he, a writer, isn't he? Huh? Yeah, writer for Saturday Night Live and The National Lampoon. Didn't he write a book? And he was books? in uh, Spinal Tap. He played the manager in Spinal Tap. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, but I that that I I got in I think a bar fight with him. And I don't normally hang out in bars, and I don't normally fight. So that is all a contradiction in terms for me. You know, anybody else here get into a, ever punch somebody? Yeah, you, you did. Yeah, I punched you, a guy in the back one time, and yeah, it, and it, it was it was my it was our landlord's son. <laughs> so well, we all went not, to school together. Uh, yeah, I don't know. On the bus, he was just bugging me really, really bad. So we got off the bus. I hit him in the yeah. back, and I. Have you have you ever punched anybody in later life? I mean, as an adult? Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. Okay, well, I'll yes. get to you in a second, Robert, because it's got to be a great story. Otherwise, tried to break you... tried to break up stuff after, after thirty. I'm, I was a lover, not a fighter. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Walt? Charlie, never. Like I said, when I was a kid, I was twelve years old. I got into a fight with the guy who had been bullying me for years, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and finally. I did enough damage to him that he left me alone, even though he obviously wanted to fight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, J J Mr. Larkin? Well, you know, working at rock concerts all my life, I've, you know, doing security and ushering, that kind of thing. I've been in a few, you know, pretty short little fisticuffs for, for no reason. But these were professional scuffles. Well, these, you know. These weren't, like, these weren't initiated by you. Uh, no, 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 it was like yeah. somebody being drunk and being stupid, and, you know. Okay, now, how about you, trucker Steve? You're a trucker, you should have gotten into a fight. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. All right, here comes Robert. I got another one. Have you? No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, you want to know you? when I punch somebody? Uh, yes, don't weasel out of this. It was a softball this. game, and somebody, it was a collision at the plate. The other team came out, we came out, and there was a scuffle. And, and I threw I threw a couple of punches. And what, how old were you when this happened? Oh, I was in my late 20s, I'll bet. Oh, really? Oh, oh I am. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. But I never started a fight in my life, not even as a kid, not once. That was just something I didn't do. <clears throat> really? But yeah. I wouldn't back down from one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you ever ridden in an ambulance? No kidding. Some people never. No. <clears throat> wow. I've always been driven to the hospital by somebody. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, Chauffeur? <laughs> well, my wife or a co-worker one time i got hurt at, uh, at the work and a co-worker drove me to the hospital wow really well Ma uh, marjorie a couple of years ago um what did she have what was wrong with her something happened with her and uh she couldn't walk and a lake huh yeah. there was a lake yeah. i can't did she break Huh? Someone bumped into her. And she yeah. Tripped, oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. This was a. Uh, uh, she was oh, walking yeah. down the street on, on Madison Avenue, yeah, and somebody, a tourist, bumped into her. She fell yeah, to yeah. her knees and literally broke her kneecap. Broke. Oh, 
I remember that. Uh, yeah. But we didn't know it was broken yet. Mm. And the next morning, she wakes up and she just can't even walk. And she's, "What are we going to mm. do?" And I said, "We got to get you to the hospital." She says, "I don't know if I can get into a, into a cab, you know." So we called an ambulance. So I got to ride in the ambulance, but because it was just simply a bad leg, they didn't turn on the siren, which really ah, bummed me out. No fun. You know, for all the times that sirens have gone <clears throat> past this apartment house, I just wanted my case to, you know. But no how way. much did it cost? $8,000? I don't know. The insurance company picked it up. Oh. You know. But uh, no, I think it was four hundred, five hundred dollars, something like that. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, here an ambulance is simply a very expensive Uber. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it's not. It's very common here in New York, and they are all fighting with each other to get the work. They're all clamoring on top of each other. What was that? There was a Bill Cosby movie, right, with the ambulance. Remember their ambulance chasers? I think Raquel Welch was in it or something. Yeah. Mother Jugs and Speed. There we go. Mother Very Jugs good. and Speed. Yeah. A, mo Wells. a movie whose title couldn't even be put out on television today. Right? <laughs> because a Me Too movement would be all over it. Right? But then, wasn't uh, Raquel Welch in that movie? Yeah, I said yeah. Raquel yeah, Welch was, was in yeah. yeah. That was the Jugs. <laughs> yeah, and it was Bill Cosby. And who was the other guy? Was Sidney Poitier, maybe? I think so, yeah. Well. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, have, have you ever had a gun pointed at you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I got carjacked one time. Mm -hmm. Broad daylight. Over the south side of Chicago. Okay, wait a minute. Let's take it one at a time. You got uh, carjacked? Yeah. Um, I was. Uh, I was actually. I used to be a process server, and I was serving papers in East Palo Alto. Yeah. And, um, some guy. <laughs> I came back to the car. Two guys had. You know, with Raider jackets on and hoods, and they said, "Give us the keys." And I said, "Here you go." <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever argue over. with them. Here, take it. I said, "Have fun." Well, yeah. You know. <laughs> okay. What year was that? Right. Well, uh, what, God, around everybody. what year? Back in the nineties, early nineties. Yeah. 90s. Yeah. 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 He, East Palo Alto has changed a lot now, but yeah, it was yeah, pretty yeah. rough. It was pretty rough area. Yeah. I, I now it now it's it's got like a fancy hotels and crap there, huh? Ikea, yeah, 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 and all that stuff, yeah. Hop, Charlie, you say you, you were at gunpoint. When, when, what, is, yeah. what were the yeah, circumstances for you? Teenager. Yeah. yeah. How, what was it? I mean. No. Well, I was walking home from work. I shined shoes after after uh, school, and I was walking home, and a group of four kids came up to me. And one of the guys had a gun. I gave him everything. Wow. Yeah, the money. Wow. Wow. That's hardcore. Anybody so, else have a gun yeah. pointed at them? Uh, 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 so, Robert? So my, my story is a little bit unusual. I, it was a day off work back in 1977, Columbus Day. I'll never forget. I was off work mm -hmm. and went to the local neighborhood bank and was standing on line to get to a teller when suddenly three cops come bursting into the bank. And I thought nothing of it until I felt an object on the back of my head. They told me, put my hands behind my back slowly. They forced me to lay on the ground face first. Wow. Long story short. This is hardcore. They thought that I was a criminal that they were looking for. They showed me the picture inside their caps, and it was a spitting image of me. Really? And what saved my sorry ass was that the bank manager happened to live in the same high-rise apartment building that I did, at the time and he vouched for me and said you know i know this guy this this guy's never commit a crime and he kind of got the cops to realize that they might have the wrong dude but it was scary oh, of course it's scary yeah my my incident you've all heard about on this show when i was a kid yeah. a friend of mine was kind of drunk and i went over to his house and he said look what i got and he had a gun and then he pointed it at me and uh, stuck it in my face for about an hour. Jeez. Nice. And, wow. he's, and he's drunk. He's drunk. Now, I know he isn't going to kill me because he's my friend, right? My friend's not going to yeah. kill me, but he's yeah. drunk. Right. And that's, that's the, that was the thing that scared me because, you know, I mean, he's drunk and he's sticking a gun in my face. What's to say he 
doesn't accidentally pull the trigger. Sure. Yeah. So, how 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 uh, you know how familiar was he with guns? I mean, you know, especially if somebody's yeah. not familiar with guns, that's even worse because they could pull the trigger yeah. by accident. I don't <clears> know. <throat> I don't know. I can't remember if he he was obviously he was familiar enough with guns that he had one. You know, that he'd stolen or something like that. I can't remember how he got it. But uh, he just, he held it right in my face for an hour. And uh, uh, since then, I've been very anti-gun. You know, I probably wouldn't be as anti-gun today as I am because I went through that very traumatic situation. Um, and uh, I knew he didn't mean it, you know, but, you know, people can kill you and not mean it, you know. Oh, hey, here comes Alan. I knew somebody was missing tonight. He heard gun. He heard gun. <laughs> yes. He heard the word gun, and that was it. Hello, Alan. How are you this evening? I'm doing good. I'm going to check my volume. How's my volume? It, fine. You, 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 Too high. You, you, were, lower. you were a cop, so you probably can answer this question. Have you ever had, had a gun? Uh, what was it pointed at you? Have you ever had a gun pointed at you? Yeah. I'm oh, sure absolutely. You did. Yes. Yes. Uh, see the hat I'm wearing for you all last week, Robert, and I'm wearing it again tonight. I I noticed it. I I, I how wonderful. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you said something in the program that I was late to one night, and you oh. said you were running around the house with a New York T-shirt on or something, and you thought of me and you took it off and changed shirts before you got on the show. I didn't want to <laughs> insult you, but I I love the hat. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Your sign's backwards. Uh, so, <laughs> humor, humor. So, anyhow, yeah, it wouldn't have bothered me that you came on with a New York shirt. I love New York. Want to yeah. sing with me? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think we, you know YouTube would kick us off. Oh yeah, probably. Okay. Sorry, I had uh, running late. I'm a bad boy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's okay. You, so you, the question you wanted to know was, have I ever point uh, somebody pointed a gun at me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. In the line of duty, I assume. Yes, you yeah. assume correctly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, did were you pointing a gun back at him? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. So it was kind of double duty that whole thing. Were shots exchanged eventually? Uh, in in uh, two of the incidences, actually. Really? Wow. That was enough for yeah. me. Uh, it was enough for me <laughs> to <laughs> retire. Yeah. Well, Believe so you, me, you, it it's amazing that you were such an advocate of, of, of guns, considering you know how, what they can do and the, and the kind of damage they can inflict. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the advocate that I am is about safe, lawful practice, you know what I mean? And, <clears throat> um, yeah, I've seen people killed. Yeah, but with guns, what good? Obviously. What good? Well, tell me, what good is a is a gun unless you are going to rob a bank? Um, well, you know, you get target practice. Well, no, uh, that's that, that's that's an affectation, really. I, if you think about it, that's not what John, a gun was created for. A John, gun, if you're pouring, I got a glass here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, uh, uh, what, it, no, but what? Thanks, pal. <laughs> you know, I mean, what what happens is, is there's a whole uh, question of. Um, uh, now I forgot where I was going with this. Of of oh yeah, why why a gun? Besides, in the old days when you, you when you know you lived in the woods and you needed a gun to protect yourself from the varmints. Okay, that was a good reason to have a gun. And you you you, sh you killed for food, right? But you could do that with a bow and arrow. Or well, yeah, you too. could, but th th this was a more efficient way of doing it, and I'm not arguing that it wasn't a fair game, so to speak. Uh, excuse the pun. Uh, and uh, so I see a reason why in the earlier days of this country it was needed. It's also needed in some parts of our country for people who live in rural areas, yeah. Because there are bears, there are animals which are dangerous, and you need a gun for that. Okay? So I understand that. Okay? But I don't understand any other reason for it. I don't see that well, necessarily target shooting is something we invented. After we thought about we can kill things with this, then we thought we can shoot targets with it. You know? So, so what you're saying is if somebody's breaking into your house, yeah. 
You'd like an unarmed security guard to come up and check on you. No, come on. What's We're the odds? What's the odds? What's the yeah, odds of somebody going in to break him in? Can we go back to this argument again? Yeah. What are the you odds? See, you you always say in Alex's in lifetime. In my whole life, I have never had any, and I live in Harlem, okay? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, you're white and you live in Harlem. In the building, okay. they made New Jack City in, okay? <laughs> Yeah, and I have never, ever had anybody break into my apartment, I, either while I was here or when I wasn't here. Well, I'll put the address online here. Somebody will. <laughs> I always had this mental movie in my head. So a guy breaks in my oh, house. Boy. Yeah, my wife and I are asleep. Yeah. They they wake me up, and I say to the guy, "Hold on a second, I've got a gun in the safe. Just give me a minute so I can." Put in the combination yeah. and get the gun so we can be. I mean, I don't understand. Am I supposed to sleep with it under my pillow? No, but how about if you sleep with it somewhere? If it's just you and your wife and you don't have kids around, let's use that example since that's what you used. Mm -hmm. uh, you sleep with it somewhere in a drawer, somewhere concealed that you can get to it. You, you, you know, you don't want to be opening a safe if you don't have to. all i'm saying is you know it's it's one thing to have the gun it's another to be able to shoot it yeah. well in okay this, in this state you better really you better i be you know uh, i would rather you know and i'm I, no one fears death more than i do but i would rather die than kill somebody else to save okay me. okay maybe now to save my family to save my wife that's a different story okay, okay? But I would not want to live with the idea that I had killed somebody. Okay. Also, I would shoot for the legs. I would shoot for any non-lethal area that I possibly could. I would not shoot for body mass like most people say you should. And you know? if they had a gun and you shot them in the leg, chances are they're going to fire and shoot you in the chest or something like All that. All right, then I'll shoot them in the <laughs> arm. Speaking of guns, did you hear about the guy in Atlanta? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What's he this? Happened. Three, three shot, three places or something like that. Yeah, three different places. All, all, um, all uh, Asian massage uh, bar. Anybody know the motive? I haven't. Wait, heard. wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what happened? What Some guy. What happened? Yeah. What happened? There was a shooting. Shootings in Atlanta. What was somebody just one person tell us what happened? Okay. This guy in Atlanta went to three different Asian massage parlors and he shot uh, three people in each one or three and two of them and, and two in one of them. So eight people were killed, all Asian massage parlors. Were all these, were these, were these, were these uh, happy ending we, massage parlors? We, yeah, well. <laughs> no, I'm saying the there are, there are legitimate massage parlors, uh, you know. Yeah, well, hey, my back is killing me. Okay, here, we'll need it. Now, yeah. they're the other kind, which has a happy ending. They, yeah. they showed they showed the one, the first ones, I guess, that they hit. The other one was like two hours away. But they showed, and there was like one where they were standing in the parking lot. There was one across the street and yeah. one next to that one. And they all had like neon lights. So yeah. uh, well, sure usually a normal, a, a legitimate massage parlor the doesn't have light, neon yes. lights. I don't know. Yeah. No, not flashing ones, too, you know. <laughs> it sounds like it was the part. It was more. the part that used to appall me. Whenever there's a school shooting, and Alan, I'm not saying it's you because I have a feeling you're actually more conservative about gun, uh, about guns and the use of them than most. But you will admit that there were gun advocates who came out and said that teachers should be armed. Now I was an ex-teacher. I'm an ex-teacher, and I always think to myself, so. In other words, I've got a class of eighth graders and I have to keep a loaded weapon someplace, which already is, it boggles the mind. But then let's say there is an incident. Okay, so now I tell my kids to get under their desks or hide in the clothing room and I take out my weapon and somebody comes through the door. I don't know if it's a kid. I don't know if it's the assailant. I don't know if it's somebody from a SWAT team. Right. Mind you, supposing it is law enforcement and I figure it out without shooting my weapon, 
Now I'm in a position where I'm standing there with a fucking gun yeah. and I have to explain to them, no, you don't get it. It's not me. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm of the opinion that teachers ought to not have guns at school. Mercy. I, I believe I believe that they ought to have a school resource officer, which they do in a lot of places, one cop in one school. And if he needs help, he can get on the radio and call for help, you know? Mercy. Yeah, yeah but I you know, you know where definitely. that where that falls apart uh, at, at Parkland, the school down yeah, in Florida. Yeah. yeah. Well, they had know, a guard. Yeah, an I, armed I, guard. Oh, you know, a deputy go. sheriff. And, and he, he ran away. away. And he went running away. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that that theory is nice in practice. Okay. It 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 works in in reality though. I mean, uh, most uh, school resource officers. <laughs> never draw their weapon and a lot of them will arrest very few students it's the worst thing they can do is have to arrest a student they're there for other reasons i mean you know obviously for protection of the school yeah. in part but i mean don't don't get me wrong schools have been hit way too often in the past 10 years of gun violence yeah well you gotta have a guy and, and, you, gotta have, the, you gotta have a guy at the school with a gun to protect it against uh uh, well, evil, active, evil, evil doers, and Woody Allen. Sure, if so, you have an active uh, shooter on the school, I would like to think that my stu my my students, my 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 kid, was partly protected. Most cops would not run and flee; they would go in yeah. and call in the the cavalry, and they would go and try and engage the shooter or shooters mm -hmm. by killing them. Or by the way, them. not to change the subject, but it's my show, and I can change the subject. Uh, did anybody watch the last episode of that uh, Woody Allen piece of crap on HBO? I did. Shouldn't they be? Oh, ashamed, shouldn't they be ashamed of themselves? You know, I gotta, I gotta admit, Alex, I'm not with you anymore. When I the first two episodes, I was on Woody's side, but I gotta tell you that last episode, man. How much of Woody's? Did, how much of Woody's side of the story did you hear there? None, but he 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 could have. Well, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, he couldn't yeah. have. They didn't ask him to, except for two weeks before the documentary was finished. It's like they didn't uh -huh. want to get an answer from him. <laughs> and the Charlie, put your sign up. <laughs> what is this? Mama told me not to come. Okay. Anyway, I don't know. I I I don't know. I mean. I, I I believe the the uh, the girl. I do believe her. Oh, I believe uh, I believe she believes it. Okay. Whatever. Okay. I believe she believes it, but I don't believe that it that it happened. I believe if you go back to that 1992 interview with Woody, you'll hear his side of the story, and it's very plausible. You know, he was in the middle of a big divorce at the time, and he said, "Why would I go to the house in the middle of a divorce?" And rape my daughter. You know, that's just not, doesn't make any sense. Uh, it, there, there is an answer from Woody. He was, a, he was only asked to reply to it two weeks before they were finishing up the documentary. And you know something? What I say is, if you couldn't get Woody to talk to you, then you don't run the documentary. Because you don't have a full documentary. You don't have the he said, she said. Am I right, Robert? You seem to agree with me on that. I had no opinion. Oh. None. Oh, okay. Then what were you going? That was a quick no. answer. Oh, the teacher Robert, called on you, Robert. Playing cards. Yeah. Huh? The teacher he, called on you. Well, he was going. Oh, he, oh, I see. That was what you he was doing. nodding to what Brian was putting yeah. up. <laughs> Brian do we, and I were. Do we, do we want one more question, or should we save the questions for later? Sure, get more. off the woody. Get a question, please. <laughs> have you Have you ever eaten an entire pizza? Ooh. Oh, hell yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have, but I don't like pizza. You, t Tucker, Steve, you've even eaten a whole pizza? It must get really lonely there in the truck. <laughs> That's why you one day I, huh? One day I was really hungry, and then I ended up throwing up because it was too much. <laughs> okay, because I, I don't want anybody here raising their hand that they ate a whole pizza because they ate one of those little ones you get out of the no, freezer no, at the no, store. Like no, no, We're no, talking no. about a regular size yeah. massive pizza. Right. And the question yeah. is, though, 
Did you eat the pieces, but did you eat the end of the crust? Oh, I ate the crust. Oh, sure. yeah, me I ate the whole uh, pizza. It's in the, you ate the, the whole pizza. Inch. I don't think I, I don't think I could do that today. I just don't well, think you don't I don't like could the crust today. either. Huh? You don't like the crust either? Well, I don't like pizza. Okay. Okay. Am I uh, unusual? I just don't like yeah. pizza. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, especially for New Yorker. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Food of the guy. You know the Yogi Berra story? Yogi Berra bought a pizza, and the guy asked him, do you want to have it cut in four slices or eight? And Yogi said, four. I could never eat eight. What's <laughs> 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 Yogi? I had, I, had lunch with, I, had, I had lunch with Yogi Berra once. Did you really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, uh, we had Yuhu as a sponsor, and they held a yes. Yuhu lunch, and he was the spokesperson for Yuhu. Right. Yeah. And so I was seated right next to him, and uh, didn't understand. Did you know what football team he played for when you sat next to him? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know he played baseball. Okay. okay. Did you ask how many goals he scored in yeah, a year? Right. Because yeah. I know a lot about baseball. I don't. I don't follow baseball, but I know a lot about baseball. I mean, I, yeah, you know, um, here's something I can do. This is strange, and I don't know if I can do it now. Now I'll probably prove myself wrong. I'm running out of signs. But if you name a football team, I can tell you what city they play in. Oh. Oh. And I don't know. I don't follow football. Buccaneers. Huh? Buccaneers. Tampa Bay. Oh. The Raiders. Oakland. Oakland. The nope. football team. Oh, well, now they. Oh, excuse me. They changed. Right. They're now down somewhere in Arizona, the, aren't they? Las the football Vegas. team. Las Vegas. Vegas. Las Vegas. Yeah. Okay. The, the football team. The the football team. What football? Yeah. Team? There's, yeah. A, there's a football. That's that's what that's called the, the football team. The football team. I got you. Is there a football yeah. team called the football team? At the yeah. moment. Yes. At the yeah. moment. Donald Trump owns it. He couldn't think of a better name. Yeah. Donald the Trump. football team. <laughs> What, the football team, where are they? I they were formerly the Redskins. Washington. Oh, they, Washington. The Redskins. they dropped the name Redskins. Oh, damn it. Now they're called the football team. Yeah. Uh, the, the, How original. Yeah, now, now, the Cleveland Indians. Are they keeping the Cleveland Indians? So oh, far. Yeah, I think, it, I think they wanted to get rid of the logo, but the logo oh, is not is just basically a, a, a <laughs> Indian brave. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> I need a sign that says that too. Mm -hmm. he, he sneezes so cute too. Yeah, yeah. I don't even want to. I have the sissiest sneeze. It's horrible. Little cat sneeze. Huh? It's a... Yeah. Anyway, uh, 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 this is kind of an interesting question I have. They came out with the Academy Award nominees for this year. Yes. Anybody familiar with these? No. Uh, any, no I didn't see them. Uh, well, I this is what I want to find out is how many of you have heard of these, okay? I heard of the Academy Awards. And by the way, most of them you can see on cable, on your yeah. various apps. No. The Father. No. I've heard of it, haven't seen it. Heard of it, haven't seen it. Anybody heard of it? No. no. Okay, I have a screener of it here. I got through it, the Academy. It, it, it's with... Uh, uh, Anthony Hopkins. Yep. Yeah. Here's one that was on cable. Judas and the Black Messiah. Hmm. Did you see, seen anybody it see it? No, but Racist. I hear it's good. Yeah, Racist. it's good. Uh, Based on a true story. Mank. What? I saw it, slept through it. It's you pretty see, boring. What? I love Mank. I thought it was Did terrific. you like the movie? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I was kind of, it was late and I was a little drunk. Maybe I'll go back and check it again. Although it was not 100% accurate. Minari. Anybody? I have a copy of that sitting on my table here. Nomad Land. You can see that on Hulu. What? Nobody. Wow. From you. Uh, Promising Young Woman. Good picture, by the way. Oh, really? Oh, Sounds is good. that porn? No, it's... Yeah, really. uh, it's with uh, what's her name? Uh, I'm trying to remember her name now. Marla Maples. No, no. but it's it's about a woman who it, 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 you watch the film and you wonder what the hell's going on, and when it's over with, you suddenly realize what was going on, and you say, "What? That was a great movie." You know, as well as kind of things while it's spine. going on, you're wondering whether you're watching a good movie or not. Uh, 
The Sound of Metal. This is available on. Yeah, that's uh, that's about the drummer who goes deaf, the punk rock drummer yeah. who goes deaf. And Trial of the Chicago Seven. I Anybody? saw that. This is that. on. That's on uh, Netflix. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I. Uh, it, what's interesting is Judas and the Black Messiah, Mank, Nomadland. Sound of Metal and The Trial of the Chicago 7 are all on apps that you can have on your TV. All of these are made for cable, made for, you know, mm -hmm. made for services, movies, like for Netflix or for Amazon or whatever. I like Robert's questions better. Well, you know, we don't want to don't go through get, all of them. Don't get me. Don't get me in trouble with the host, huh? You know, okay, I bring sorry. I bring him in to do that when there's nothing to talk about. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm hey, you know, you know, all the news already. He's yeah. a <clears throat> hey, uh, I subscribed to uh, Paramount Plus last night. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, and you know, movie I, I I found on there. What? Seconds. Have you ever seen Seconds? Yeah, that's with uh, Rock Hudson. Yeah. Was it great directed by John movie. Frankenheimer. What? Yeah. I love that movie. movie. I always remembered that movie and loved it. It's a little dated, but it's good. It's really it's good. It's a great movie. Fucking great. By the it's way, creepy. the, the creepy as hell. The actress I was thinking of was Carrie Mulligan. That's she, it. Yeah. She's been oh, nominated yeah. for Best Actress. And I have no idea. Uh, let's see here. Best actor in a leading role. The nominees are Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. Uh Chadwick oh, Boseman. Good movie. Uh Chadwick Boseman. <laughs> Chadwick Boseman and Chadwick Boseman. So I'm wondering who's going to win that. Uh, who, who can name the last? You know, you know why he's going to win because Hollywood is still white and racist, and they believe that the best kind of black person is a dead black person. Oh. So that's why they're going to vote for him. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. I'm leaving now. Good night, everybody. Trivia question. My son. Academy Award trivia question. What is it? Who there can is name the, comment. the, the <laughs> other actor who won a uh, best actor posthumously? Posthumously. Best actor Posthum posthum posthumously. Posthumously. Uh, a best actor? Yeah. Uh, no, that wasn't what's his name for playing the Joker in. Uh, no. Uh, I'm trying give to give you a clue. Who? Oh? Clue. Network. Oh, uh, you mean? Oh, oh uh, yeah, uh, uh, the British actor, uh, uh, Finch, Peter Howard Finch, Charles Peter Bronson, Finch. Yeah. Peter Finch, yeah, really, Howard, uh, Howard Beale, yeah, really, yeah. I didn't realize he was dead when he got that. See, yeah, yeah. but Bozeman will win it this year because he's dead. You know, yeah. how can you beat that as a yeah. publicity stunt? You know, um, uh, yeah. My face looks awfully red these days. I yes, think, it I, does. I yeah. Well, you see, I think what it you is. You got to try a different color jacket. No, it's my lights. See, oh. look at this. Watch that. See? Oh, yeah. that's much better. You oh, see? You look sick. Oh, yeah. yeah. You better yeah, go Mark late. Yeah, did a nice job of the makeup now. But hey, the, you're looking blue. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but, uh, oh, no, is, no. You look uh, natural skin color now. Oh, that's, that's why I was so red. Because, see, if I go here and I go here... Then that goes red. See, but anyway, there you go. But they don't look as well, bright red. here. They're not as bright in my eyes. Um, but uh, let's see here. Uh, so I think Chadwick Boseman's got it made. If he doesn't, he died for nothing. I guess we're all going to have to find out who he is. Chadwick <laughs> Boseman. Oh, he's yeah. really a very good actor. Believe it or not. You know, Great. never heard of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Holy yeah. Black wherever Black. Alan is, I'm trying to point to Alan. I wherever he is. I roll. I roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You need the emojis. No, you need the emojis. Just show the emojis. There you go. Okay. Okay. Uh, he's up against Sasha Baron. Uh, what? Let's see here. Who? Who is he? Sasha Baron Cohen. No, he's going up. Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen's up for best supporting actor for playing a person I knew, and actually, when I saw him play the part, you know, I thought I was going to hate him as Abby because I knew Abby, oh. right? Right. And actually, I thought he did a very good job. You know, he, he obviously studied the guy and what he was about. Uh, you know, he's got pretty good range. I mean, from that, you know, to to all the other stuff that he's doing, yeah. pretty uh, good. But uh, um, um, 
his uh, his act, you know, his actress in uh, in uh, what do you call it? Uh, what is it in 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 uh, Bor the Borat movie? Uh, Mana Baklova Bakalova. Mm -hmm. uh, has been nominated for Best Supporting Actress, and I, I thought, thought she I ordered was... that at a Greek restaurant once. I, I, <laughs> I thought she was terrific in that film. Yeah, Giuliani should get special mention, too. Well, uh, who was it? Was Sasha Baron Cohen? It's something where he wanted to thank his co-stars, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> oh, he did? <laughs> so I, I will assume that the first half hour was talked about the soon-to-be former governor of New York. No, nah, not really. Oh, no, no politics. No. no, we brought that up. We talked about that for a short okay. time. And, uh, you know, I just say that it's, it, you know, all these uh, Democrats that are eating their own over this issue, oh, okay. I, I honestly believe that, you know, that uh, uh, nobody, is, nobody, is, nobody is sworn to anything under oath. So these are all allegations and can't be taken as anything else. Just like they did with the Supreme Court guy that was. That no, was I. Uh, that's a different story. He was going it's up for a very. Not this again. He was going up for a very important job. I had not to, this uh, again. I had to fight this out with Phil. Right. He he was going up for a very important job, and uh, he, he everybody in that case before that committee was sworn in. Okay. Right. And, right. and and were under oath. None and, of these women are under oath right now, and how many of them will be willing to stand up under oath if something happens? Complete BS. You know, you guys with your signs can go fuck yourself. <laughs> you I'll know? be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make up some for tomorrow night's show. There you okay. go. Which, by the way, I'm doing another interview with uh, Will Durst. Oh, uh, awesome. Good. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah, guy. We, we checked out Alex, with him. You you've called you've said about Cuomo that yeah. he's um, I don't I remember the exact words you used, but that he's difficult to work with and mm -hmm. he's arrogant and yeah. he's the yeah. bully. Well, those are accusations too. Why are they true in your mind? And yet these no, women I'm, I'm, are I'm saying by by it under oath and sign okay. away their firstborn. By reputation. Okay, and all right, and but those are allegations, right? Why is he painted I've got a that shadow way on my head right here? It looks like I've oh, got Jesus, black and blue and marks. Joseph. What? What? Anyway, uh, why don't you uh, check your fever? Okay, uh, no. <laughs> um, uh, what was your question again? You there. Well, you 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 constantly call him a bully and arrogant and difficult. No, to I'm work saying that people say too. people say he is. I didn't say he was. I say people say he is. I don't know him right. personally, so I don't know that he is a bully and that he isn't the sweetest, most wonderful guy in the whole world. But you seem to hold to those allegations. Well, right. well, I'm I'm willing to accept that he's not a pleasant person to deal with, but that's but, no reason to get rid of him. But you're not willing to accept that this large All right, number all right. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. He's the nicest guy in the world. No, no, no. I'm not asking you to do no, that. No, you beat me. Just... You beat me into submission. I'm pointing out that you're accepting one set of yeah. allegations, but in the other case, you want them to sign away yeah. their firstborn child. Second part is, what kind of proof do we expect there to be when yeah. a bully who's going to hit on a woman does so inappropriately? It's not as if he's going to do it in a crowd of 50. Well, you know, you're starting this too late because we just had the theme running here. And we, we can get to that tomorrow. We can get to that tomorrow. Yeah, it's a lot of time. To tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, uh, huh? Time flies. Time flies. Uh, by the way, Jeff, you had something quickly you wanted to say? Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> uh, tom for tomorrow is another day here at Terra. Uh, okay, Robert, don't give me that 10-pound look. I had fun yesterday on the... On the early show the four o'clock show yeah well this one's well, pretty, it was one o'clock here it's pretty pleasant too you know anyway hey yeah. listen that's it get lost everybody right. come back again <laughs> tomorrow and then we can do it all over again and i can repeat some stories i've told you 20 times before so you know it could be another good night everybody 
Give yourself a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye at you. There they go. That's the listener. That's the uh, uh, the, the uh, citizens panel. That's what we call them. There'll be another one commencing on the intersection, which is next over most of this same station. You call. It's on Skype, and you call Gabnet Live. Okay. That's it for tonight. See you again tomorrow night, same time. Oh, by the way, there's a sports show tomorrow night. Don't forget that. See you tomorrow night, 1030. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, as I say, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there. Wear a goddamn mask, will you? Night, everybody. <laughs>